past research have demonstrated again and again, it is not very effective by constraining human mobility in order to control epidemic. And also WHO made it a kind of international law said the nation state are not supposed to suspend the flights and the travel unless there is very strong evidence or unless there is clear instructions from WHO. Constraining human mobility is obviously very favorite you know, policy tools that many governments uh, have adopted, both internal to a country as well as across international borders. So how should we square this? Probably China and the UK represents two extremes, right? China is really total shutdown, and the UK has taken almost exactly the opposite approach. They think the containment and stopping mobility would be counterproductive. So that is a fascinating uh, situation, and we really need rigorous research to evaluate you know, which approach is uh, more appropriate. Probably the best solution will be a combination of the two, depending on the context. Then we are also interested in the consequences of these mobility constraints uh, for different populations. As we know, nowadays with the service sector being the major part of national economies in many parts of the world, many people actually rely on mobility in order to secure the livelihood. Taxi drivers, delivery workers, they have to move in order to deliver the work and also they rely on other people's mobility in order to have demand for their service, right? So if you have a sudden halt of mobility, uh, the situation can be very uh, devastating for them. All these kind of things, I think, uh, um, need to be uh, examined, and also the epidemic really provide a very rare opportunities for migration scholars coming from different disciplines and to re-examine all these questions and rethink the meaning of mobility.